Uh, I thought we did some things we got to work on. Uh, you know, a lot of those showed up. You know, but you know, when you look at the game, you know, there was a lot of drives on both sides, offense and defense, that you know we had some self-defeating errors where you know whether it was a penalty and we kept uh, kept their drive alive, or we had a penalty and installed some of the things with ours, and, and it just makes it a lot harder. It really does. I mean, even the the first uh, you know touchdown drive of the game, uh, you know Haynes has a big run. We get called back, and yeah, you know, we'll take a look at him on film. Uh, and be able to uh, really see see what the issues are, uh, especially some of the perimeter holding plays. Uh, you know, sometimes it's the you know the, the back you know stretching the ball outside too wide. Uh, sometimes it's you know guys having their hands outside and truly holding. Uh, but we'll take a look at those. Uh, it gives us good stuff to be able to look at and really make uh, make corrections on um, and adjustments. I thought the guys did a good job in, in, in situational football. You know when we got into the. Uh, Got into the red zone, got into the goal line situations. Um, you know, defense really they, they tightened up when they got down there. Uh, offense was able to punch it in a couple of times on those, and really that you know we talk about the middle eight of the game where uh, the you know the last of the first half we we're able to score, and then coming out in the second half we we're able to score uh, on those plays, and uh, so you know we we're able to really extend the lead there. But uh, all in all, it was a good win. Uh, happy for the guys. Uh, you know, happy to go to play a team, you know, right down the road uh, and, uh, you know, be able to enjoy it tonight and then and get back to work and really clean up a lot of the things we got to clean up. So with that, uh, open, open for any questions. Okay, questions. Okay. I'm sure you're pleased again with that defensive performance, especially in the red zone. Yeah, you know, there, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of things that, you know, we're still playing through. And, you know, we've, you, you, know, bat, you know, a lot of times we get bad eyes and might be caught looking in the backfield, uh, you know, Looking at the wrong keys, uh, with some motions and different things, and uh, you know we got a lot, lot, lot we can work on. But yeah, you know you, you always take you know, we're guaranteed 12 opportunities a year to be able to play play a game, and we work 365 days a year, 300 probably 55, 60 days a year, uh, you know preparing for these things. It's the only sport where that happens. So you know you take those opportunities and you have to build on them and grow with them. Uh, you know I thought there were some things we did from the first game to this game that we were able to grow on, and now from this game, so you know, like I said. We had two first games. It was, it was a very unique situation in the season, uh, uh, having really two first games almost. So, uh, but there's a lot of things we got to clean up and work on. But uh, you know, we can always build on those things. It's always good to build on them after a win, for sure. Go. Uh, you had an unfortunate injury with Chad Alexander, but got a chance to see uh, Anthony carry a little bit. And he broke off a nice long run there at the end of the game. I guess just how is it? You're testing your depth a little bit, running back with Trey out and. and Getting to see some of these guys, what did you see from Anthony, and how are you feeling about your running back room right now? Yeah, I feel good. I mean, you know, running back's position, you know, you get banged up, and uh, you know that's that's the nature of the nature of it, the nature of the game at that position. So, uh, you know, it was good to see Anthony get in there. Uh, you know, I thought by that point we we uh, been running the ball. You know, the the you know accumulated blows over and over throughout the game it started to take its course and. Uh, you know, good to see him break off a couple of runs there, and good to see him hold on to the football. You know, he made it, you know, real effort. You know, carrying the ball high and tight and holding on to it. Thanks, Rob. Talk a little about Malik Rutherford and what kind of a weapon he can be with his speed out there. I don't know if we have enough time to talk about Malik. <laughs> He's like one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, you talk about a guy that's got energy every single day. Uh, you know, he loves playing the game. I mean, he loves playing football. He really does. And, uh, you know, to see him be able to get out and, and do so many different things, he's so versatile, you know, whether it's, you know, playing slot receiver, whether it's the deep balls and play action, uh, you know, the screens, the, the rounds, I mean, the different things he's able to do, you know, uh, you know he's, he's a huge asset for us and uh, a huge piece of what we do on offense. Okay. Coach, you, you mentioned versatility, and versatility is something that I, I feel like is, is pretty – prominent on this team. I mean, you have, uh, I mean, Eric Singleton, he's taking rushes out of the backfield. He's also catching the ball very effectively. Haynes King, he can run the ball, he can throw the ball. How important is that versatility and then balance in the run and pass game to your offense? Yeah, you know, the key to it all is being able to get guys touches. And when you have a lot of guys that are, uh, they, they can be explosive. And we talked about it this week, and, you know, you know, in order to create explosives, you got to get the ball to explosive playmakers. So, uh, you know, we've been creative in ways to get those guys the ball, uh, you know, you, you, you call a pass concept, I mean, it doesn't always dictate who it goes to. 
Uh, you can kind of limit it a little bit based on, on it, but when you have some of the different reverses and rounds and, and, and sweeps and those things, uh, you can guarantee who's going to get the ball. And I thought uh, Buster did a good job of spreading the ball around and getting the ball to the guys that can make plays. Okay. We've got two up here, or actually three up here, and then we'll go the back door. Uh, the defense was able to hold them in the red zone and then was also able to hold them three at 12 on third down. What was it? What made them successful in those situations? <laughs> That's a broad question right there. <laughs> Holy cow. What made them what made them successful? Well, they executed. Uh, and that's the whole key to defensive football is, is you know getting the call, getting aligned, right? And then uh, you know, being able to execute what the call is, you know, being in the right gaps, having the, you know, doing the right thing, you know, blitzing when you're supposed to blitz, uh, you know, making the right adjustments with different formations. Uh, you know, so you know, then, you know, third down packages, we're able to, uh, you know, get different packages in there, um, you know, be able to, you know, just, uh, collapse the pocket. You know, a couple times the quarterback got away, uh, got free and, and scrambled out of there, uh, which we got to do a better job on that, of condensing the pocket and being able to get off the block and, 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 and make a play before he's able to do that. So uh, I didn't realize that you said it was 12, uh, three, three, three or 12. Yeah, and then they had a couple of fourths that so they went for on fourth. And, uh, again, you know, it's a lot of teachable moments out there that we have to uh, uh, to build on. It's, it's early in the season, so we have, we have to take these things. We have to understand that, that wins are uh, are hard to come by, right? And we're you know excited to get a win for sure. And we, but we got to turn around tomorrow and be able to get these things corrected and uh, be able to move on to the next opponent. A couple more, mm-hmm. or a couple more up front before we go to the back. Uh, Coach Keith, just talk a little bit about the complimentary aspect of this team, right? The defense, you know, was able to you know, hold them only three points in the first half. The offense gets going, 21 points on the answer. Just talk about that part, you know, both sides of the ball playing for each other. You know, that's, that, that's something we talk about a lot is complimentary football. And, and, you know, special teams comes in that as well. Uh, you know, it seems like Rodney's about a shoestring away right now from from uh, from hitting a big one in the punt return game. Um, you know, they got, a, they got they got too much yardage on the first kickoff uh, that we had, but I thought, thought we came back and uh, you know, Aiden put the majority of them in the, uh, uh, out of the back of the end zone, and, and I think we had one more we had a chance to to make a play on. Uh, you know, uh, you know, David did a good job of putting the punts where they needed to be. Uh, you know, it, it's a field position game, and you know that it doesn't matter. <clears throat> uh, what game you play? I mean, it's uh, it, you know, you get the field position is really big, and uh, you know that's where the offense, defense, and special teams. I mean, I don't think I've ever been involved in a game where the first offensive drive started at the minus one, and then the next offensive drive started at the plus twenty. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it truly was you know being able to complement each other and take advantage of those opportunities. Okay, okay. we have some in the back. What do we got? Yep. Uh, Coach, you had talked on Tuesday uh, about the value of the win last week, and then you were talking about is this program is winning consistently. This one tonight, what is the value in it in terms of that growth as a program? Well, it, it shows it showed consistency in winning. <laughs> I mean, it did. Uh, uh, you be able to go back to back with a win, and then uh, you know that, that's that's the name of the game. I mean, you play the game to win, and you know, but we can't always control. You know who wins the football game, but we can control how we play on each individual play. We can control the effort we play with, control the discipline we play with. Uh, you know those are the things you can control. Uh, playing one play at a time. You know have a bad play, being able to put that behind you and then go on, move on and play the next play. You guys have the, uh, the seven drives last week where you were able to sustain the clock. Uh, today you were able to hit a lot of big play balls in this game. Uh, how would you speak to the versatility and the potency of this offense to be able to have that quick strength as well? Yeah, you know. I think I think we ended up having 10, uh, 10 total offensive drives uh, this week. Uh, a couple of them were, you know, quick, uh, quick strikes. So, you know, the, the time of possession ended up being pretty balanced in the football game. Uh, but but that's what we have to do offensively. You know, we have to be, be able to utilize those guys and create those uh, uh, create those explosives because you know it, it, it changes the game fast. Time for a couple more, Kelly. You talked a lot about your process and wanting to, learning how to win, those types of things. And this is a game where you guys have struggled in the last few years. And I know that you wanted to see some resilience from your team. Kind of what did you learn about your team tonight? Yeah, I think, you know, the culmination of the other things I've said, of, uh, you know, we won the football game, right? We played really good at times, right? We have things we've got to clean up from the game, right? And, and, but when it's all said and done, we, we came off the field with a win, and that's what's important. Uh, you know, we were able to you know, get some new guys in the game and play them, uh, which was good. 
uh, get those guys experience. I mean, uh, you know, Weston went down for uh, part of the series, and you know, Harrison jumps in there, and you know, you get a true freshman jumping in, uh, jumping in at center, and you know, throws a strike right back there, and is able to go out and play. So, continuing to build the depth uh, at, all, at all those positions, so when something happens, you know, there's not a fall off. Okay. Back here. Yep. Sure. Right, Coach, you also said earlier in practice that momentum isn't built by winning games, it's built in practice. Does that change at all by winning consecutive games? Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> not at all. I mean, you know, we'll, uh, you know, there's not a coach on the staff that won't, you know, get home and start watching that film or actually be in their office here pretty soon and watching the film uh, and, you know, getting those corrections made because we know, you know every day, I mean, sunrises comes up the next day regardless. And, you know, sunrise comes up when you have good things and when you have bad things. Right? It's not always just the bad things. You've got to be able to, uh, you know, turn the page. Right? You've got to be able to move on. We've got to be able to come out ready, ready to go tomorrow, uh, ready to practice tomorrow. Uh, like I said, enjoy it. Uh, enjoy it today and then, you know, restart it again tomorrow. Or is it, it could actually be almost tomorrow? <laughs> about right here? Yep. Coach, um, you gave up over 300 yards on offense. Do you have any mix? Do you have any mixed feelings just about you know over 300 yards on offense but still holding Georgia to 12 points? No, I mean, like I said, I mean, you, you, yeah, you like to say you don't give up any yards. That'd be a perfect game, right? <laughs> so uh, you know, there's corrections to be made. There's a lot of corrections we have to uh, uh, make from the football game. Uh, we'll watch the tape. We'll get them done. How do you feel about just uh, Santucci's the defensive play calling only two games into the season? I think it's been really, what, really good. You know, look, as coaches, you can be, you know, I think all of us strive to be perfect and put the, put them into the perfect call, right? And that doesn't always happen, right? But everyone has an assignment to do within the call and be able to play. And some calls. You know, are really good for that situation, and some aren't. And uh, you know, we we scout our we, we correct ourselves just as much as we correct players. All right, that, that's 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 what you have to do when, when you're when you're a coach. Right? You're in a position of leadership. You have to be able to self-assess, and and that's the beauty of what I believe our staff does. Is, is you know, we'll come in tomorrow and we'll talk about it. We'll sit down and, and, and we'll we'll do that. We'll self-assess and see where we can be better. Uh, see what was good, uh, and then see how we have to attack the uh, the the opponent next week.